Garmin just introduced a new generation of their heart rate sensor as part of what are basically the most expensive Garmin watches you can currently buy. However, is this actually an improvement over the older generation sensor? Well, in this video, we're gonna put it to the test. I tested this sensor in the just released Garmin Epix Pro Generation 2 and also in the newly released Garmin Phoenix 7 Pro. Now the Phoenix 7 Pro will set you back about $800, whereas the Epix Pro Gen 2 sent me back a whopping $1,000. Now the most important aspect of this sensor, in my opinion at least, is the fact that it might lead to better heart rate accuracy during workouts. And that's what we'll be focusing on in this video. We'll test both of these new watches at the same time during many types of exercises and also compare them to the results of the older generation sensor. And finally, I'll also give you a sneak peek at some of the sleep stage tracking tests, which might also benefit from a different sensor. Now these results are still very preliminary, but also very interesting. Okay, let's find out if this new sensor sensor is worth this kind of price tag. Hello everyone, for those of you that are new to the channel, my name is Rob and I'm a postdoctoral scientist specializing in biological data analysis. Now, as you might know, I don't like going into too much detail when it comes to the specs of new watches, since you can find those on Garmin's website. I just want to mention that the new Elevate version 5 optical heart rate sensor has more LEDs, which could help increase the accuracy when the contact with the wrist is not optimal during workouts. And as I saw DC Rainmaker pointing out, the design could also help deal with light leakage from the outside, which might mess with the sensor's readings. Luckily, I recently tested the Garmin 4965, which is the old generation sensor, and I also did many recent workouts with the normal Phoenix 7, which also has that sensor, so we have a good comparison data set for the older generation sensor. But okay, with all of that out of the way, let's get straight to the testing, and let's see if reality matches up with the theory. Now to test the performance of the two new Garmin watches, I'll compare the heart rate measurements of the Epix Pro and Phoenix 7 Pro against the Polar H10 ECG chest strap, which can generally record my heart rate very accurately. And we'll start by looking at one of the easiest types of exercises for a watch to track, cycling indoors. And we'll be looking at a total of three interval spinning sessions. Now this involves very little movement or tension on my arms and will therefore produce less noise. And here we can see an overview of that accuracy over all rides for the Phoenix 7 Pro. Now each dot here is a single heart rate measurement, with along the horizontal axis the value according to the Polar H10 ECG chest strap, and on the vertical axis the value according to the Phoenix 7 Pro. Now the closer the points are to this blue line right here, the better the agreement, and the darker black the color, the more dots that there are. So there's quite a lot of points right here, for instance, but also right here. Now the agreement is actually quite good since almost all points are on or close to the blue line, so I'm not disappointed at all with the performance of the Phoenix 7 Pro. Now there are a few points above the blue line right here and a few below it as well, but there's just a few, so there are some moments where it got the wrong heart rate, but it's not bad at all. Now the correlation value, which is this R value up here, is also pretty good at 0.97. The correlation cannot be higher than 1, so a correlation value of 0.97 is close to the upper limit of performance. And we actually see more or less the same thing for the Epix 2 Pro. I would say that the results look basically identical, though there might be just a few more points below the blue line here and a few less above it, I'm not exactly sure, but it's a very similar result. And the correlation value also is very similar at 0.97 so both watches seem to perform about the same and it's looking quite good for both of these watches but of course we need to look at the individual training sessions to make sure there's no weird artifacts or something and here we have the first example interval spinning session and we see a really good agreement between the phoenix 7 pro and the ecg chest strap now along the horizontal axis here we have the time and my heart rate is along the vertical axis in blue green i plotted my heart rate according to the polar h10 ecg chest strap and in red is my heart rate according to the Phoenix 7 Pro. And as you can see, the lines basically overlap perfectly for this session and I have nothing to complain about looking at this graph. And we see more or less the same thing for this second spinning session. There was just this one moment right here between my first and second interval where the watch struggled to detect my decrease and subsequent increase in my heart rate. Now this doesn't look that bad honestly, but it did just struggle a little bit. But what about the Epix 2 Pro? Well, the results for the first spinning session with the Epix 2 Pro are displayed right here. So now we have the Epix 2 Pro in red. 
And as you can see, for the first spinning session, the Epix 2 Pro also shows an almost perfect agreement with the ECG chest strap. But what about that second training session? Well, it actually showed a very similar issue to the Phoenix 7 Pro, so struggling between the first and the second interval. Again, it's a minor struggle, but it is there. Though in this case, this was mostly with detecting my increase in heart rate and not a decrease. So if we go back to the Phoenix 7 Pro, which is right here, we saw this mostly struggle detecting my decrease in heart rate, whereas the Epix 2 Pro mostly struggled detecting my increase in heart rate. They both struggled at the same time, so I'm not sure what's going on there. And we see a minor struggle right here for the Epix 2 Pro with just a slight delay in detecting an increase in heart rate but overall both watches are doing very well. Still, both watches perform quite well and they generally seem to give quite similar results. But how do they compare to other watches and specifically to the older generation sensor? Well, let's take a look. That overview is displayed right here. Now the correlation value I was talking about before is the metric I'll use for this, which is displayed along the horizontal axis right here. We want that value to be as close to one as possible. And on the vertical axis, I order the watches from worst to best. So the further to the right and the higher a device is, the better is its correlation with the reference device. And here I marked the Epix 2 Pro and Phoenix 7 Pro in red. And as you can see, they both performed very similarly. However, it is a bit tricky to see so let's zoom in a bit to the better performing watches, which actually includes the Epix and Phoenix. And that is displayed right here. Now these are only the watches with a correlation of 0.9 or higher. And as you can see, both of these watches are really in the upper segment of watches. Now they are still outperformed by the Apple watches and some Huawei watches, which are really the best out there at the moment. However, both the Phoenix and Epix Pro with the newer generation sensor generally do seem to do better than some of the watches with the older generation sensor, like for instance, the original Phoenix 7 and the 4965, both of which I retested in the last months. Interestingly though, we do see the Garmin Venue 2 right here and I'm not sure what's going on there. This is the one Garmin watch which did abnormally well in my original testing compared to other Garmin watches, but this is a test I would definitely like to repeat. So actually this makes me feel quite optimistic about the new sensor in the Epix and the Phoenix Pro. Now I do need to mention that these are all preliminary results since I had to buy the watches myself the moment they were released and Garmin couldn't send me the watches before release. This means I only had about a week to test these watches and I'll be doing individual in-depth reviews of both of these watches in the coming weeks. However, let's now take a look at a more difficult exercise for a watch to track, cycling outside. Now cycling outside increases the tension on my arms because I have to hold onto the handlebars and there's also much more movement and bumpiness making it much harder for the watch to get a clean heart rate signal. Now I tested both watches for a total of 6 bike rides, let's have a look. And an overview of that is displayed right here for the Phoenix 7 Pro. And as you can see, it started to have some difficulties here. There are many more points away from the blue line, and in this case, especially below the blue line. This means that quite often the Phoenix 7 detected a too low heart rate. And we can see that in this correlation value as well. In this case, the correlation value is 0.72, so a lot lower than 0.97 we were looking at before. So it's really significantly decreased. And that drastic reduction in correlation indicates a much poorer agreement with the reference device. And interestingly, we again see that the Epix Pro Generation 2 performed almost identically to the Phoenix 7 Pro. The correlation is also the same, again 0.72, and that means that both didn't do that well for cycling outside. However, let's take a look at some of the individual training sessions to see what's actually going on. And here we see the first biking session I did with the Phoenix 7 Pro. And as you can see, the general patterns in my heart rate are somewhat tracked, but it seems that the Phoenix 7 Pro still has problems with quick changes in my heart rate. You can see that right here, for instance, but also right here and right here. So there was a big decrease in my heart rate right here, and the Phoenix 7 Pro wasn't able to pick up on this. And the same for this quick increase in heart rate, right? The Phoenix 7 took some time to catch up. Now some sessions were actually a bit better like this one right here. We do see some of these delays in detecting an increase in my heart rate, but it caught up rather quickly I would say, though here it also struggled quite a bit more and it missed this whole peak in my heart rate. But overall this session doesn't look too bad, though there were also quite bad sessions like this one right here for instance. You can see that the Phoenix 7 Pro in red wasn't able to pick up on most of my peaks in my heart rate. You can see it missed a peak right here, but also some peaks right here, right here, right here, and right here. So this is really a bit of a mixed bag, and like I said, the patterns look more or less similar for the Epix 2 Pro. So this is the same ride with the Epix 2 Pro, and we can see it has this same type of problem, so it isn't able to pick up on all the peaks in my heart rate. 
rate. And if we now go back and forth between the two watches for this ride, we see that they struggle in roughly the same moments. So here we have the Phoenix 7 again, now the Epix again. So they struggle in roughly the same moments, but the heart rate isn't exactly the same. So I don't know exactly what's going on here, but it seems to be that this ride was just really hard to track for these two watches. Though similar for the Phoenix 7 Pro, the Epix 2 Pro also had some good rides, like this one right here, for instance. So for this ride, for some reason, it was able to track most of my heart rate accurately. There was this one delay right here and picking up on my increase in heart rate and also a slight delay here. But overall, this ride looks again quite good. So I'm not sure why it's a bit hit and miss. I've seen this before for Garmin watches where some rides are pretty good and some are pretty poor. So they're not that reliable for biking outside, at least not on me. However, let's now compare the performance of these two devices to that of many other watches I've tested in the past. And those results are displayed right here. I marked the Epix 2 Pro and Phoenix 7 Pro in red. And similar to before, the more to the top right the device is, the better is its performance. And as you can see, in this case, it doesn't seem as though the new sensor did better than the old sensor. Both watches are actually very close to other Garmin watches. But let's zoom in a bit to take a better look. And those results are displayed right here. Again, we see that the Epix and Phoenix Pro are super close together, but their performance is also very similar to the performance of, for instance, the 4965, the Garmin Venue 2 Plus, and the Garmin Venue 2. So it doesn't appear as though, at least to me, that the new sensor is doing better for cycling outdoors than the older generation sensor. Though I have to say that the original Phoenix 7, which I recently tested a lot again, actually did do quite a bit worse than the Phoenix 7 Pro and the Epix 2 Pro. And this might actually be a more fair comparison since the Phoenix 7 has a more similar weight to the Phoenix 7 Pro and the Epix 2 Pro, whereas the 4965 and the Venue 2 series are quite a bit lighter, making it easier to get an accurate heart rate reading. So it might be that the new sensor might actually be a bit better for cycling outdoors and that the weight is making it struggle, but then you might also just get a cheaper, lighter watch with the old generation sensor. But like I said, I need to do more testing. But let's next take a look at something I started to do much more of after reviewing the 4965 running outdoors. Now I've only been able to get two runs in so far with the Epix 2 Pro and the Phoenix 7 Pro, but I still think the results are really interesting and I wanted to share them with you. And here you can see an overview of the results with the Phoenix 7 Pro. And as you can see, the correlation is again a bit better compared to what we saw for cycling outside, though not quite as good as what we saw for cycling indoors. So there's a few more points close to the blue line, but still some points below it and even some above it. And the correlation value is really in between what we saw before. So for cycling indoors, we had a correlation of 0.97 and for cycling outdoors, a correlation of 0.72 and for running at 0.85. And a correlation value of 0.85 is not terrible, but also not great. And what I also found interesting is that the Epix 2 Pro in this case appears to do slightly worse than the Phoenix 7 Pro. Now the version I have of the Epix 2 Pro is significantly bigger and heavier than the Phoenix 7 Pro. So it could be that the added weight and thereby probably increased motion on my wrist might therefore have negatively influenced the performance. However, this is a very preliminary conclusion to draw and I wouldn't put too much trust in it until I can do more testing. And in this case, it's especially important to look at the individual runs. And here you can see my first run with the Phoenix 7 Pro. And you can see that the red line of the Phoenix 7 Pro actually followed along quite nicely with the ECG chest strap in blue. It misses a few of the peaks and valleys in my heart rate. So right here and right here, for instance. But overall, it looks quite good. And if we now take a look at the Epix 2 Pro for the exact same run, we can indeed see that it struggled quite a bit more. It seems to struggle especially with detecting the peaks in my heart rate, as you can see for instance right here, but also right here and right here. Now I'm not sure if this is just random chance or the actual weight of the watch, but there does appear to be some difference between the watches. But moving on, here we actually have this second run that I did, and these are the results for the Phoenix 7 Pro. And as you can see here, the Phoenix 7 Pro also struggled quite a bit more as well. It missed quite a few of the peaks in my heart rate, and it was able to track my general pattern, but not the exact details for this run. So I would say that this definitely looks quite a bit worse. And in this case, the Epix 2 Pro actually did a tiny bit better, I would say. So I would say that the jury is still out on whether the added weight of the Epix 2 Pro actually makes a difference or not. I'm not sure. It might make some difference. But for this run, I would say, looking back at the Phoenix 7 here and the Epix 2 Pro here, that the Phoenix 7 did a bit worse than the Epix 2 Pro. The difference is not that big. So I honestly have mixed feelings so far about the new sensor in the Phoenix 7 Pro and the Epix 2 Pro. 
It might have improved in their cycling performance, but I don't see huge differences yet for other exercises. However, let's now take a look at one of the most difficult exercises for a watch to track, and also one where their new sensor and extra LEDs might actually have the best chance of improving the performance, namely weightlifting. Now for weightlifting, it's not the movement that makes it hard to track the heart rate, but this exercise is much more difficult because of the increased tension on my wrist and my arm, making it much harder for the watch to get a clean heart rate signal. However, first a quick side note, if you're interested in the latest updates on the wearables I'm testing, I'm planning to start back up with my newsletter and posting more off the cuff things on my Instagram and my YouTube Shorts channel. So if you're interested in any of those, those are linked below. Of course, you would also make me really happy and it would help my efforts if you subscribe to this YouTube channel. But of course, this is totally up to you. Now enough self-promotion, let's take a look at the performance during weightlifting, which I tested during a total of four training sessions. And here we can see an overview of that performance for the Phoenix 7 Pro. And this honestly doesn't look too bad. A correlation value of 0.8 is not bad at all for weightlifting. And I've seen many Garmin watches perform quite a bit worse. Though we already saw quite a significant improvement with the Garmin 400 965. And we again have the exact same correlation value with the Epix 2 Pro, so 0.8 in this case. And we see that most deviation seems to be with points below the blue line for both the Epix and the Phoenix. This means that both watches detected a too low heart rate in these moments, which likely means they missed some of the peaks in my heart rate while I was doing my sets. Now because each time I do a set of an exercise, the tension on my arm increases, and this makes it hard for the watches to accurately track my increase in heart rate However, let's now take a look at some of the individual training sessions to see what's actually going on. And here we have the results for the first weightlifting session with the Phoenix 7 Pro, where I was training my upper body. And as you can see, the Phoenix 7 Pro generally missed the exact peaks in my heart rate, and it only detected a peak once I was done with the set. Now you can see that because it only detects the peak in my heart rate once my heart rate started to decrease, which means I've ended my set. So you can see that for instance right here, but also right here, right here, and right here. So I finished my set, and then it's able to pick up on the increase in my heart rate that I had. Interestingly though, for this second weightlifting session, it was able to pick up on some of the peaks in my heart rate. And it even overshot some of the peaks in my heart rate, as you can see right here, but also right here and right here. So detected a too high heart rate. Now this is actually something rather unique, and I cannot really remember seeing that for any other watches. And what we can also see right here is that the Phoenix 7 Pro detected a decrease in my heart rate, where it should have detected an increase in my heart rate. And this is something we have seen for other watches, where there's a change in my heart rate, and the watch cannot decide Side, if this is an increase or decrease and it goes the wrong way and detects a decrease in my heart rate. Now I should mention that what I was looking at before was training off my upper body but the Phoenix 7 Pro does appear to do better when I'm doing leg day. Well I didn't have a full leg day but a half leg day right here where the first half of this training I was training my legs and as you can see here it was able to track my heart rate quite accurately but then when I switched to upper body, in this case my back and my biceps, it did have trouble tracking my heart rate accurately. So training legs appears to be okay, any upper body exercise appears to be a struggle for the Phoenix 7 Pro. And like I said, we get more or less the same results with the Epix 2 Pro. So for the first half of this training, I was training my legs and there I did quite well, but when I switched to back and biceps, it really started to struggle. And for this training session right here, where I did fully an upper body workout, it sometimes was able to pick up on the peaks in my heart rate, as you can see right here, for instance, and also right here, but it also struggled quite a bit detecting the peaks in my heart rate. I would say that most of the time, it wasn't able to pick up on the peaks in my heart rate. And for training sessions where I did a full upper body workout, the Epix 2 Pro appears to have similar struggles as the Phoenix 7 Pro. So you can see that most of the peaks in my heart rate I actually missed. It does pick up on some of them, right here, right here, and right here, but most of them are not detected, and it only detects them when I end my set and the tension on my arm decreases. You can see that right here and right here, for instance, that it misses the peak, and the moment I end my set, it is able to pick up on that increased heart rate. But how do these results compare to the performance of other watches? Well, let's take a look. And we can see those results in this overview right here. Again, the more to the top right, the better is its consistency with the ECG chest strap. And as you can see, relative to other watches at least, the Phoenix 7 Pro and Epix 2 Pro, which are marked in red, are amongst the upper middle class of watches, I would say. However, let's zoom in a bit to see that more clearly. And if we zoom in, we can indeed see that the two new Garmin watches are definitely not doing poorly. However, their performance is about the same as, for instance, the 4965, and also similar to the previous testing I did of their Garmin Venue 2. However, they do seem to do a bit better than many of the other Garmin watches I've tested in the past, which you actually cannot see in this overview right here anymore after zooming in because they have a correlation below 0.7. 
And I should also mention that I generally don't recommend using any watch for weightlifting that has a correlation below 0.9. So even though the performance might be a bit better than at least some of the other Garmin watches I've tested in the past, I still wouldn't recommend relying on the hardware measurements while weightlifting. Now the best thing is to just buy an ECG chest strap, which you can connect to these watches, or if you really want to watch, then you might consider getting an Apple Watch or some specific Huawei watches. These are the only ones with a correlation of 0.9 or higher. So what is my overall feeling about the new sensor in the Apex 2 Pro and the Phoenix 7 Pro? Well, it does seem like a slight improvement over the older generation sensor. However, I'm honestly not sure if it's worth it to switch over from an older generation Garmin watch. I think at the moment, the difference is not large enough to warrant upgrading. However, it could be that Garmin is still able to improve on this further with software updates and we might see significant improvements in the future, so we'll have to wait and see. But in the meantime, I was also curious if the new sensor would also improve the sleep stage tracking, since it might also improve the performance of the heart rate measurements taken during the night, and it might further improve other measurements or metrics that the Garmin algorithm uses to estimate your sleep stages. So I also performed an initial systematic sleep test. However, uh, before getting to those results, I first wanted to know how accurate the watch would be at measuring your heart rate while I'm not too active, which is also important for understanding the performance of the heart rate measurements the watch takes during the night. So I also tested the heart rate performance during the day while I was mostly stationary but also moving around occasionally. And here you can see an overview of that performance for the Phoenix 7 Pro, which I wore on my dominant hand, so my right hand. And as you can see, luckily almost all of the points are along the blue line, especially in the lower heart rate range. So between 50 and 90 BPM, the accuracy is pretty good. The Phoenix 7 Pro seems to do really well in this range. In a bit of the higher heart rate range, there's a bit more deviation. But overall, it doesn't look terrible. And it's important to know that these low heart rate ranges are accurately tracked because this is also what it measures during the night. And we see an even slightly better performance for the Apex 2 Pro right here, which are on my left, so my non-dominant hand. The correlation is 0.92, whereas the Phoenix had a correlation of 0.89. Now, I'm not sure if this is significant, but it makes sense that it might be slightly better because, of course, I use my left hand a bit less, so it's under less tension and less movement. And you can also again see that in the lower heart rate range, the performance of the Apex 2 Pro is really good, so similar to what we saw for the Phoenix 7 Pro. There's a bit more deviation in the higher heart rate ranges right here, but in the lower heart rate ranges, it always seems to perform quite well. However, let's now move on to the actual sleep stage testing, and I tested both watches for a total of four nights against the reference device. And I checked if they agreed with the reference device when it comes to the different sleep stages. So that means REM sleep, deep sleep, light sleep, and awake time. Now note that in this video, I won't go into all the details that you're used to from me, and I will just provide you with a first quick overview of this preliminary test, but I will share more detailed results in my full reviews in a few weeks. Now to check if these Garmin devices can detect my sleep stages, I'll compare them to an EEG device called the Dream 2 that can actually measure my brain waves and has been shown to be relatively reliable at sleep stage tracking. And here I show an overview of the sleep test results. Now for getting an overall impression of how well the Garmin devices perform, the Dream 2 should likely be good enough. However, the gold standard would be polysomnography, which you would also like to try on the Phoenix 7 Pro and Epix 2 Pro in the future. Now, I actually tested the Garmin Phoenix 7 against a polysomnography device, and that video should release soon. I will start by looking at the results for the Epix 2 Pro since I wore this on my non-dominant hand. Now, on top here are the sleep stages as recorded by the EEG device, and on the left are the sleep stages as recorded by the Epix 2 Pro. I wore both the EEG device and the Epix 2 Pro to bed for four nights, and we will see how close the prediction of the Epix 2 Pro are to those of the EEG device. Now each column here sums to 100%, meaning that we can see what percentage of the sleep stages according to the Dream 2 was predicted as a sleep stage by the Epix 2 Pro. And if they perfectly agree, all values on the diagonal should be 100%. As you can see, deep sleep agreement was really good, showing a total agreement of about 93%. This means that 93% of what was deep sleep according to the EEG device was also detected as deep sleep by the Apex 2 Pro. And if there was any confusion, it was with light sleep in this case. Now, light sleep agreement with the EEG device was quite okay at about 72%, and the biggest disagreement was with deep sleep in this case at about 17%. Though there was also quite a bit of disagreement with awake time at about 9%. Now, REM sleep detection is by far the worst, and this is what we've seen for many Garmin devices. In this case, only 44% of what the EEG device detected as being REM sleep was also detected as REM sleep by the Apex 2 Pro. It actually detected more of what the EEG device detected as REM sleep as being light sleep instead. 
Now, this also means it's very unlikely I'll be able to see my sleep cycles based on just the data from the Apex 2 Pro, since REM sleep is very important for senior sleep cycles. Finally, in terms of awake detection, there was a quite good agreement with the EEG device, with more than 90% of what the EEG device detected as awake time also being detected as awake time by the Apex 2 Pro. And it actually showed a nice evenly distributed disagreement with all of the other three sleep stages, but all at a very low percentage, in this case just 2.9%. And just for completeness, let's also take a look at the results for the Phoenix 7 Pro, which are displayed on the right right here. Now, these are generally very similar to the results for the Apex 2 Pro, though potentially a tiny bit worse, which might be because I wore it on my dominant hand. We see good deep sleep agreement, decent light sleep agreement, poor REM sleep agreement again, very similar, and good awake time detection. So overall, very similar results, though potentially a tiny bit worse. However, again, let's not make any hasty conclusions and let's wait for my full reviews before we draw those. So this honestly doesn't look too bad for the Phoenix 7 Pro and the Apex 2 Pro. However, to put these results into context, we can compare the performance of these two watches to that of 40 other watches I've tested previously. Now this graph shows an overview of the agreement of different watches with the EEG device. Along the horizontal axis, we have the average agreement over the four individual sleep stages. And on the vertical axis, we have the agreement of the worst sleep stage. Now the better the agreement, the more to the top right the device is. And the watches marked in blue right here were actually tested against the polysomnography device, which is the gold standard of sleep stage tracking, and the ones that are not marked were tested against my EEG device. Now the results based on the EEG device and those based on the polysomnography device actually lead to very similar conclusions. As you can see, the devices with the best agreement so far were different Apple Watches, in this case the Apple Watch Series 7, Series 8, the Apple Watch SE and the Apple Watch Ultra. The HD Pod 3 also performs very well, and other good devices include Aura Rings, Fitbits, Whoop Straps and the Withing Sleep Analyzer, though their agreement is not quite as good as that of Apple Watches. If we now display the Garmin Phoenix 7 Pro and the Garmin Apex 2 Pro in the same plot which are marked in red, we see they performed quite okay compared to other devices. They're not amongst the absolute top, but I've definitely seen improvement over the last years when it comes to Garmin sleep stage tracking. You can see that some of the newer testing I've done on the 4965, Phoenix 7 and 4255 already show that these devices did quite well. Now it could be that the Phoenix 7 Pro and Epix 2 Pro are doing slightly better because they're slightly more to the top right, but I have to do more testing to be sure. Now overall, I don't think that the Epix 2 Pro and Phoenix 7 Pro are bad at sports and health tracking, at least not based on my initial testing. However, I'm not sure if the new sensor is really a significant enough improvement over the older sensor to warrant the high prices of these devices. Now don't get me wrong, I know that there's many, many features that I didn't address in this video, since this is just not the type of thing I tend to test. For testing of those particular outdoor and extreme sports features, there are other great channels out there, like for instance DC Rainmaker, Desfit, Matt Legrand, Chase This Summit, and many, many more. I tend to focus personally at least on the health and sports metrics I can systematically compare to some kind of reference and that's what I report to you here, which is in my opinion actually the most value I can personally add on YouTube. So based on my testing, I would say that if you're already rocking an original Apex 2 or Phoenix 7, I wouldn't be too jealous of the new heart rate sensor, at least not yet. I do see some potential minor improvements already, but that's really what it is, a minor improvement. However, I do have to hope that with future software updates, as Garmin gets more and more comfortable with this new type of sensor, that the performance will improve even further. And as I mentioned, this is just an initial test and I will do much more detailed testing over the next few weeks and I'll provide you with those results as soon as I feel that they're reliable enough to make a full review of both devices. However, I did want to get this first initial result out as soon as possible since many people will now be making their buying decisions. Now, if you do decide to get an Epix 2 Pro, Phoenix 7 Pro, a Whoop Strap, another device or anything at all on Amazon for that matter, even something as small as toilet paper, and at the same time you want to support the channel, there are different affiliate links and non-affiliate links in the description below that do not cost you any extra and some even provide a discount. Now, since you're interested in the Epix and Phoenix Pro, I think you will also be interested in the Garmin 49965, which I recently reviewed and you can find that video right here and it also really helps me if you subscribe to this channel and like this video but again totally up to you now in the meantime thank you so much for watching and catch you in the next video